My birthday actually just passed a few days ago. So seeing all the support around this channel really meant a lot. It was a nice little birthday gift, if you could say. So I really appreciate that. Hey everybody, back with another video. So in today's video, we're gonna check out all the states and territories. I didn't know that they were called territories, but hey, that's what I'm trying to do, right? Learn more. So this video is called All Eight States and Territories in Australia Ranked Worst to Best. So let's check out the video. They do the incredible. Help save lives. So can you. You took something that didn't belong to you. Do you love to curse, enjoy large empty swaths of extremely hot desert, and want to increase your risk of skin cancer? Well, then you might be a feral camel. In which case, you're likely already in Australia. And if you're not, why haven't you moved here? With gorgeous beaches, go. incredible cities, great healthcare and education, and some of the most unique ecosystems and wildlife not found anywhere else on Earth, the land down under is one of the best countries to live in. But while this giant island continent country, Conanuntry, is around the same size as the contiguous United States, it has just one thirteenth the population. And over half of the 25.9 million Australians reside in just three cities. But doesn't Australia have like six states and two major territories? Why don't people spread out more? Well, Mr. Camel, because most of the country gets so desert, hot right? that you'll end up looking like this guy if you spend five minutes outside. So unless you actually are one of the one million feral camels they call the outback home, you one million? want to stick with 85% of Australians who live within 50 kilometers of the coast. Doesn't like every state touch the ocean though? How do I know which is best? Find out as we rank all eight Australian states and territories from worst to best. Here and we let's go. 5,000 likes for a video on the 10 best cities in Australia. Number eight. Did he say 5,000 likes? Jesus. It's a lot of likes. Actually, we're going to start off with a quick honorable mention. The external territories. That's right, Norfolk Island. Chris Whoa, I didn't know that. So there's external territories that are a part of Australia? That's, that's something new there. I didn't know that. Island, the Cocos Islands, and a few other islands that no one lives on. I didn't forget about you. Now, don't get me wrong. These aren't terrible places to live and are breathtaking with plenty of endemic species and extravagant okay. landscapes. Christmas Island's nickname is actually Australia's Galapagos due to its unique red crabs, booby birds, flying foxes, and hundreds of other animals and fauna found throughout the tropical jungle and surrounding coral reefs. And the largest and most inhabitable of these islands, Norfolk Island, is home to the tallest pine trees in the world, beautiful beaches and rolling pastures, and some of the rarest birds. Wow. If you don't mind a very slow-paced lifestyle with beautiful. few other conveniences, and most things being more expensive as they have to be shipped in, the external territories might seem like paradise. But considering they all have a combined population of only around 5,000, the extremely isolated lifestyle isn't for most. 5,000? Northern Territory. If you're strictly looking to rake in the dough and don't mind the lack of infrastructure or seclusion from the rest of the country, the Northern Territory might be for you. The median household income is the third highest of any state or territory at 115 grand, and the median home value is the lowest at just 515 grand. Plus, there's no property tax. But remember how I said a lot of Australia is uninhabitable? Well, a huge chunk of the most uninhabitable land Okay, I know that's inhabitable, but that's so beautiful. Look at that. I'm sure that's high in the air too, whatever drone they're using. It's are huge mountains. Is here. The southern half of the territory has a climate similar to the Sahara Desert. And while Darwin in the coast is a bit more livable with tons of rainfall during the wet season, it also gets very hot and humid. And that rain often turns into cyclones and extreme flooding. So despite accounting for 17.5% of the country's landmass, less than 250,000 residents, or 1% of Australia, actually lives in the NT. Oh, wow. And that's the only state or territory which had a net population decrease over the past year. But the lack of people is also why many love living here. From Litchfield and Kakadu to okay. Uru and Wataru National Parks, the territory is home to so much stunning wide open wilderness that you can experience all to yourself. 
Although you might not want to be too alone, because not only does the Northern Territory have the most saltwater crocodiles in Australia, it's also by far the most dangerous state or territory, with a violent crime rate 323% above the national average. Yeah, that's somewhere I wouldn't want to be, be living at. For one, you have the most crocodiles and the most crime. Mm, let's keep looking. Number seven, South Australia. While the Northern Territory is home to some of the highest wages in the nation, South Australia has the second lowest median household income at just $98,500 and the highest unemployment rate at 4.4%. But if you're someone who prefers the simple life and community over vibrancy and wealth, the festival state is a wonderful place to settle down. It's home to so many charming suburbs and beach towns, over 5,000 kilometers of pristine Ooh, nice. coastline, the best wine in the country, and hardly any crime. And with below average fuel, grocery, and utility costs, and a median home value of just 565 grand, South Australia is actually the cheapest state. And Adelaide is the cheap. The cheapest state? Well, okay. I mean, 500, the median, it's not bad. The cheapest state? Wow. It's capital. Sure, Adelaide's also likely the most boring city with over a million residents and a bit behind the times with supermarkets still closing at 5 p.m. on weekends, for example. But that's also by design. Adelaiders love that their home offers all of the amenities of a city with great food, museums, parks, festivals, and a few unique attractions. I guess in different areas, companies are staying open a little later. Like the Adelaide Central Market, while still maintaining its small town charm with hardly any traffic and where everyone knows everyone. Not to mention, it's easy to navigate with no toll roads and a beautiful beach or waterfall hike being just wow. a 20 minute drive from the city center. Number six, Queensland. Queensland is Australia's most popular holiday destination, oh, okay. and for good reason. It's incredibly safe, has the most national parks, and with scenery as diverse as the oh, Great Barrier Reef. Ding. I want to see a sea turtle so bad. Just to see. I know we can't touch them, but just to see a sea turtle one day. They're so beautiful. And you know, ever since Finding Nemo, everybody wants to see a sea turtle, including me. Rainforest, Porcupine Gorge, and Lamington, Gearwing, wow, Beringen, so under a volcanic Blackdown Tablelands, and Great Sandy National Parks, not to mention the only Everglades ecosystem outside of Florida. Oh, it's okay. debatably the most beautiful state. And if you prefer a more chill vacation, the Sunshine State also offers plenty of theme parks and mm. resorts in the Gold Coast. And over th the theme parks and the swamp kind of reminds me of Florida. I've gone to Florida a few times. Just it gives me that Florida little feel to it. But I know everything else nowhere near Florida, so let's keep watching. 15,000 kilometers wow. of jaw-dropping beaches. So while many used to only holiday here, that's quickly changing as more people learn of Queensland's exceptional small cities and towns. In fact, it's now the fastest growing state and one of only two states where over half the population doesn't live in the capital. And it's not because Brisbane sucks. It's actually often ranked as the most livable city in Australia, as it's not nearly as congested or expensive as Sydney or Melbourne, while still oh, offering okay. legit big city amenities and experiencing rapid growth, especially with the Olympics coming in 2032. But while Queensland's economy is the second fastest growing of any state, it still has some catching up to do with the third lowest median household income of just $105,000. Because of this, and the fact that the housing market is booming with a median home cost of 788 grand, the Sunshine State has... 700 plus for a house? Wow. Okay. So I can only imagine how much a house costs in Sydney. Oh my God. Guess we'll about to find out highest poverty rate at 13.5 percent number five tasmania tasmania feels nothing like the rest of australia and that's because it isn't an island located around 200 tasmania, kilometers south okay. of the mainland the smallest state by both size and population is home to so many otherworldly and unique landscapes and species not found anywhere else. Not to mention, it rarely ever gets hot and has the cleanest air on what? Earth. But not only is Tasmania an adventurer's paradise, with places like Cradle Mountain, Mount Field, and the Bay of Fires all being a short drive from pretty much anywhere on the island. The Bay of Fires? I wonder what that's about. I wonder if they'll say it here. If not, I have to look up a video for that. 
It's also home to so many delightful small towns with some of the friendliest people you will ever meet. And the capital, Hobart, punches well above its weight with tons of history and beautiful architecture, great restaurants, bars, and cafes, and Mona, one of the best museums oh, wow. in the country. Sure, there's little in terms of bustling city life, but if you're looking to slow down and relax while being surrounded by unspoiled nature, Tasmania is perfect. Well, if you're retired or work online. Because while the economy is currently the fastest growing, the median household income is still the lowest at just $89,600. And the unemployment wow. rate is 4.3%. At least... Compared to everywhere else, that's pretty low in Australia. Well, from what this video has been saying, I don't know if it's all accurate, but yeah, around 80,000. I think that's the lowest one as of now that we've been seeing on this video. Cost of living isn't too bad with a median home price of 691 grand, plenty of cheap. 600 grand's not bad. Whoever's making this video, they must be living pretty good. 600 grand for a median home. I wonder what the median home is in Georgia. It can't be that high. I gotta check that out quality produce, and low energy bills due to most of the island running on hydroelectricity. Number four, New South Wales. Ah, uh, Australia's oldest and most populated state. Home to Sydney, the most oh. populated city. But while Sydney's big city amenities... I did not know this, so I didn't know Sydney was in New South Wales. Okay. You guys, I'm learning here, okay? I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, well, that's something I know now. I'll keep it right here. Multiculturalism, high quality of life, and beautiful beaches and harbors speak for themselves. This great state is so much more than just its capital. New South Wales spans over 800,000 square kilometers and is packed with 18 diverse bioregions, ranging from sandy deserts to lush rainforests, rugged mountains, rolling oh, wow. hills, grasslands, There's snow? I didn't know there was that much snow. Let's go back. Forests, rugged mountains. I did not know that there was that much snow in Australia. Maybe a little bit, but that much? I mean, that's not a lot, but wow. It's rolling hills, grasslands, rivers, and coasts. Yeah, did you know this, this, and this are all within a two hour drive of Sydney? And if both big city life and serene scenery aren't your jam, there's also no shortage of incredible mountain or beach towns, oh, wow. as well as one of it's, the best. Oh, that's cities so cool. What is that? Is that a, is that a, is that a lighthouse on top of a mountain? Or is that a castle? I don't know, but I hope it's somewhere you can visit. Wow, it's beautiful. Castle. As a whole, oh, New South Wales is likely the most balanced province and truly offers something for every type of lifestyle. Then why the heck is it only number four? Well, because it's bloody expensive, with the highest median home cost of $1.22 million. Oh now, to be fair, God. Sydney does have an excellent and diverse economy, okay. so wages across the state aren't bad, with a median household income of 114 grand and the lowest unemployment rate of just 2.9%. But oh, that's not living bad. in Sydney also means terrible traffic everywhere being crowded, and some of the worst nightlife for a major city. Uh, Number three. The it's pretty crowded here in Georgia. The traffic is crazy. So I wonder who has the worst traffic, us or you guys? Australian Capital Territory. Covering less than 2,400 square kilometers and consisting of just Canberra, its suburbs, and Namadji National Park, it's no surprise that many Australians never even think of visiting the place. And that's honestly a shame, because sure, Canberra isn't exactly the most exciting city, seeing as it was entirely planned with the sole is oh, serving wow. as Australia's capital, but it's still one of the most livable cities in the world. With the second lowest crime and unemployment rate in the country, the highest median household income at 150 grand, and by far the lowest poverty rate of just 5.4%, Cambrians have very little to worry about. Especially since they're close to so many gorgeous mountains with the beautiful Malangalo River running right through town. But while the ACT checks all the statistical boxes, oh, wow, nice. a lot of the city just feels empty with nothing to do if you don't know any locals. The CBD is mostly fields, office buildings, and roundabouts. And while there are walkable areas with shops and restaurants, such as Braddon, Canberra feels a lot more like a collection of spread out suburbs with a few town centers than an actual city. Although, since it is the capital, there are a ton of excellent museums, galleries, and gardens. But a fair warning, Canberra is one of the few Australian cities which gets a true four seasons. Meaning the winters actually get cold. Oh, okay. So you guys get fall, winter, spring, summer. Okay. Whoever wants to live in Australia that do get all four seasons, that's a pretty good transition. Number two, Victoria. 
When you think of Victoria, you probably only think of Melbourne, aka the true cultural capital of Australia with the best coffee on earth. Seriously, prove me wrong. But while it's nearly impossible to get bored in Melbourne with its outstanding music and art scene and so many bustling alleyways filled with trendy bars, restaurants, clubs, and cafes, the Garden State is also so much more than just the hipster haven. From skiing in Falls Creek to the penguins of Phillip Island to the stunning ridges of Grampians National Park and cascading waterfalls in... You guys have penguins? Australia keeps on surprising me. I did not know y'all had penguins. Wow. I really want to go for a... <laughs> forests of Yarra Ranges and Otway National Parks, Victoria may only account for 3% of Australia's wow, landmass, but there is no shortage of sensational scenery. Not to mention, it's by far the safest state and home to the Great Ocean Road, the most beautiful drive in the country. But 75% of Victoria does live in Melbourne for a reason. With a stellar job market, world-renowned universities, tons of history, a hip and accepting culture, and excellent public transit, nightlife, and infrastructure, it makes sense that Victoria's capital is growing faster than Sydney and will likely eclipse its population by 2050. Mm. Especially since it's cheaper. Although- 2050? That's, what, 30 years almost? Come on. Is still pretty darn expensive, with the statewide median home price being 966 grand. Oh, Man. did I mention that Melbourne can get four seasons in one hour? Yeah, one time the temperature dropped 10 degrees Celsius in three minutes. Now what? Before we get to number one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and let me know what you think the best state or territory is. I don't know. But without further ado, number one. Western Australia. Bigger doesn't always mean better, but Australia's largest state by total area, accounting for nearly one third of the country, is also the best. Surrounded by 21,000 square wow. kilometers of captivating coast, Western Australia is home to so much enchanting, untouched wilderness. But the best thing about living- That's where that pink lake is at is that it's still incredibly affordable with a median home value of just 630 grand while also having the second highest median household income of 116 grand. Now this is mainly due to an abundance of mining jobs which aren't necessarily the most stable. But Perth's job market mm. is growing and diversifying too. And speaking of Perth, oh, it's like okay. the most underrated So that's where Perth is, okay with a hip music and art scene in Fremantle, excellent suburbs and beaches, solid public transit, above. Oh, look at that bridge, that's cool. The architecture there in Australia is pretty nice. Average nightlife in restaurants, and a relaxed, stress-free lifestyle. Outside of the state's extreme isolation, with Perth actually being the most isolated big city in the world, there's just not much wrong with Western Australia. And that's why it's our best place to live in this fine country. Okay, so Perth is the best place to live in Australia, according to this video. But what do y'all think about that? My birthday actually just passed a few days ago. So seeing all the support on this channel really meant a lot. It was a nice little birthday gift, if you could say. So I really appreciate that. But if you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe maybe, if you want to. And I really appreciate everybody. Thanks. Bye.